Let's take a look at transactions in the transaction manager. Simply go to transactions. Now once you're in the transaction manager you're going to see a list of all of the transactions that you have set up. For example, here are the transactions that my team is currently working. I'm going to show you how this particular screen is laid out. The name of the transaction shows up here, the date when it was added and modified, along with who added the transaction. Also the status of the transaction. Currently we're looking at all transactions that are either active or pending. Now if you click here, this section will allow you to look at transactions that are either you can do view all, closed, withdrawn, expired, or the contract fell through. The default always takes you to active and pending transactions. What I'd like for us to do is focus on a particular transaction and I can walk you through that transaction so you can see more about the possibilities of using the transaction manager. Let's pick one. Let's take this one right here, 12 Woodway, that Carolyn added. And the cool thing about the transaction manager is you can keep everyone on your team in the loop on any given transaction by using this tool. So we can see that this is the sell price here, 600000 the commission, any other fee that we charge that's being charged on the transaction. So that could be an administration fee or transaction fee. Um, you could also do this by a flat fee as well. As far as the commission amount, that can be a flat amount. Total earnings on that transaction. Here in the description and information, this is a, a field where you can pretty much key in anything that you want. You would consider the description and info section as sort of your scratch pad. That's a private area where you're going to put information that only you and your team can see. That's going to be important because when you provide your client with a login portal where they can view the transaction as well, it's important to know that they won't be seeing the notes that are in this section here. So that's just for your own information. Here you're going to say who you're representing. It could be seller, buyer, or buyer and seller. Now depending on what you select, the information here will change. So here we're, we selected seller and um, the seller information populates there. And then once you key in all the information that, that you want in this section, you're going to save and continue. Now the property information, if you have the property information keyed in, you can you can pull it up here. Here's a pull down, for example, to the different properties. If you have the listing already keyed into more solds, you can populate the listing details here if you choose to. Looking at important dates, so contract date, inspection date, any important dates that you have. Now if you want to add additional important dates here, uh, these are the ones that you can pick from. Home warranty received, you can check that and then put in the date when you receive the warranty. So that's how the important dates section works. Looking at closing parties involved. Now closing parties involved, we call them CPIs. Anyone can be a CPI. It could be the attorney, could be a closing officer, could be the buyer agent. Anyone that is currently working on the transaction could be considered a CPI. And in order to add them, you just simply click here. You can conveniently find the person by last name. And if that person is a closing a party, you select what their role is. You can email that person their login and contact information just by clicking this here. For example, this is the buyer agent on the transaction, Aaron Williams. If I wanted to email Aaron Williams his login information, the system would immediately create a login. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. Notes, any notes that you want to key on, on the transaction would be entered here. To add a new note, you just simply click and add the note. The rights is going to be displayed here. And what that means is who has the right to view this note. Um, you can select rights on your notes as, as well as your documents, any tasks and to-dos as well. Now adding documents is extremely easy. You already know how to do it. Simply click here, find the document, put in a description, hit upload. Now here are a few documents that are already part of this transaction and the document description is right here. So this is an authorization. If I wanted to change the name, simply click under description and make a change. And for example, I can click on any document 
and pull that document up. Now, the other thing I want to show you is action plans. We learned how to implement action plans in another, uh, in another portion of the training. However, now what I'd like to do is show you how you can add an action plan to a transaction. Before, we talked about adding action plans to a contact. All you have to do is click here. And an action plan, by the way, is a series of tasks. And these come preloaded. So you've got various closing plans, short sale plans, and you can create as many plans as you wish. All I would have to do is pull down the plan that I want. It will default to the contact that you're working on and the transaction. When do you want that action plan to start? You go ahead and key in a date there. And then all you have to do is hit the assign button. And if you don't want these tasks spread out to your calendar, you simply check don't add to calendar. That's action plans. Now you can add individual tasks as well. So if I click add a task, then the task details window come, opens and I can add an individual task that needs to be done to the transaction. Now these tasks are going to automatically go, if you decide that they go on the calendar, they will. But they're also going to be in your task and to-dos here for the transaction. Not only are they going to appear here, but they're going to also appear on the contact details page of this contact. And that is the contact manager. One other thing I want to show you, and that is if you remember all the way at the top, we see the percentage of completion on this particular transaction. Right now this transaction is 33% complete. And that is all based on the number of tasks that have been completed. So you can see here there are six tasks that have been completed and there are many more tasks that are yet to be done. So that's the transaction manager. Any CPI, any co closing party involved can be assigned a login username and password so that they can log in and see whatever you dictate that they can see about the transaction. They only are going to see the information that you allow. Now I highly recommend that you download and read the user guide for the transaction manager. It's only a handful of pages. I believe it's six or five, five or six pages. Very easy to read and will get you better acclimated to this powerful tool, this game changer for you. Now, the other thing that I want to mention here are these in the closing parties involved. Here are some different icons here at the bottom. So you see a little checkbox and that is you can check any closing party that you would like to email. Okay, and that's, if I click here, then it will allow me to email any template that I choose to whatever closing parties that I've selected to receive that email. Uh, this is to delete that individual. And this little early arrow deal here is if I want to change out the contact party. One other thing that we do at the Nolly team is we create a transaction, and this is a little different, so listen to me closely. We actually create a transaction as soon as we take the listing. So as soon as we take a listing, we create a transaction for that listing. Now, I know that a lot of times in real estate, we've been trained that the transaction begins when we get it under contract. But we believe that the transaction begins when we take the listing initially or when we take on the buyer when we sign the buyer rep agreement the transaction with that individual begins at that time what that does for you if you do it that way is it will allow you to create a login portal your client as soon as you get their home on the market or as soon as you get that buyer under your belt and that way it trains them to log in on a weekly basis to get status updates on where you are either with their listing or with the buy side of their deal of helping them to find a home. And on the buy side, you can simply put notes in that say, uh, went out and, and looked at three homes this week. Uh, buyer is considering home number two because of, etc. And it allows them to, to, to log in and see, hey, this person is taking good notes and, and reflecting on what we've discussed. If you've got a listing, same thing. So if I've got a new listing, it allows me, by, by inputting that listing into the transaction manager immediately, it allows me to update my client on all of the things that I'm currently doing to get their home sold. 
So all I've got to do is put an action plan in place. That's a, the new listing action plan. And it will spread out those tasks across in, into the tasks to do. It will spread out the list of tasks in that listing plan. And from there, the seller can see, wow, look at all the things that Nolly is doing to get my home sold. So again, just another tip for using the Transaction Manager. Make sure you put all of the features to use with the Transaction Manager in your business and you can see your business streamline the way ours has.